everyone, and welcome back to Developer Office Hours, live from Stripe Sessions. We're so excited to be here, and I'm very excited because I know that we've had so many great, exciting product announcements, and particularly one of my favorite topics that I know very little about, stable coins. So I'm so excited to be joining here with Jen. So welcome, Jen, to Developer <laughs> Office Hours. Um, would love to start just sharing what's top of mind for you and what drew you to really be on the forefront of driving crypto at Stripe. Yeah, definitely. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, this Stripe Sessions this year has been all about AI and stable coins, so to be at the forefront of what Stripe is doing um, has been really exciting. But we actually have been at it for quite a while now. Um, I actually joined Stripe almost four years ago, so come this July, it'll be four years. And after a couple months, I joined the Stripe crypto team that started in 2021. So we actually, Stripe has had a really interesting history with crypto, so Patrick and John um, historically had already been interested in crypto from their work accepting Bitcoin payments and also Patrick um, kind of being involved in the space. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why and the reason why I'm particularly excited is that Stripe is really in the business of money movement. People always think of us as only like a payments processor company, but we basically solve money movement problems for mm -hmm. all of our users. And stablecoins is basically a alternative and in our opinion, somewhat better way of solving some of the money movement problems that we've identified at Stripe over the past decade. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm really excited about. I know, that's awesome. And like stablecoins is such a major topic right now. Can you explain in like simple terms what stablecoin is and why does it matter to builders and developers? Yeah, definitely. So. Um, most people are at this point in time familiar with cryptocurrency, right? Mm -hmm. It's like basically this, um, to like these tokens that live on the blockchain and there's different types of cryptocurrency and stable coins are one particular type of cryptocurrency that is actually pegged to a regular or what we will call a fiat currency, basically a non-cryptocurrency like the US dollar or the euro. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times uh, you'll hear us talk about stable coins and you'll hear us name stable coins like USDC or other stable coins and those are specifically stable coins that are one to one to the US dollar. So you're basically, through the power of stable coins, um, able to distribute easy dollar access to the entire world because anyone can actually hold a stable coin with a crypto wallet, um, but not everyone can hold the US dollar with a random bank account that's not in the US. Wow, yeah, no, that's so exciting. And I love like the global first mentality when it comes to cross-border money movement. And so I guess in your from your perspective, how do you how do stable coins improve the way that we conduct international transactions? Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like three key things um, for stable coins is one, they're global by default. So that's what I was hinting at earlier. Mm -hmm. Unlike the traditional uh, financial rails that are very country specific, specific mm -hmm. um, stable coins is basically, if, as long as you have access to the internet, you basically could have access to a crypto wallet that can hold stable coins. So in the US, we always talk about like ACH and Wire. Maybe in the EU, you talk about SEPA. In Mexico, you talk about SPE, mm -hmm. and they're not basically country agnostic. Um, so number one, stable coins being global, but global by default make yeah cross-border money movement a lot more efficient. Mm -hmm. um, number two is that they're also a lot faster. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, um, ACH takes a couple of days, Wire takes a couple of days, we also have Swift that takes a couple of days, also more expensive. But stablecoins, basically, as soon as it the transaction finishes on the blockchain, mm -hmm. you actually have the money. So you have the concept of logical and physical cash landing right then and there immediately. So you're able to move money faster mm -hmm. and also, you're able to move money 24/7, so no more having to like knock on, on the banking yeah, system. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't have to knock on the bank, or you have to think about wire windows. You're able to actually move real money um, around the world. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting! And so, like, to make it real, to kind of to bring it to life, like, what are some of the key use cases that you're seeing? Um, and people coming to you and asking about how to leverage stable coins. Yeah, definitely. So it's actually funny. We have a huge stable coin spotlight like area at Sessions today. And I think the number one question that people ask is, oh, I'm currently using Stripe for payments today. 
like, what do I do with stable coins? Um, and while the Stripe crypto team has built out a significant number of products at this point, one of the ones that we announced last sessions is stablecoin payments. Mm -hmm. And that's been our like killer growth area across all our product verticals so far. So basically, what's really cool is that stablecoin payments allow merchants to accept stablecoins just like any other payment method mm -hmm. really easily. It's basically like a click of a button in the Stripe dashboard. But what's really cool, kind of going back to like the global and faster and kind of all of those like tenants of stablecoins that we love, basically merchants are able to reach customers from hundreds of countries immediately with just turning on one payment method instead of having to turn on all, in addition to turning on all the local payment methods that are available. Yeah, amazing. So, yeah, exactly. Oh gosh, so is this going to make it go mainstream? <laughs> is, this, is this going to, the stable coins pans everyone, you heard it here first at Stripe Sessions, but, um, but no, yeah, tell us like, is it going to, yeah, what's next for like, yeah, will we go mainstream with stable coins now? Is this the first step in making me um, as a e-commerce person want to go buy something with a stable coin? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that when we announced to be honest, I felt I knew that the crypto native companies would probably use our stablecoin payments product, but honestly, I wasn't sure if you're a traditional like retail, e-commerce, or even B2B invoicing um, use cases would really come online to the stablecoin payments. Um, kind of idea of how to move money around, but they really have. So I think in terms of the merchants that are interested in accepting stable coins, as long as they're basically, as long as they want to operate globally, which more and more mer merchants want to do a lot quicker, and as long as they want to be able to move money faster and basically reach their customers where they are, it's been a huge win for stable coin payments in general. So I do think this is probably like the number one thing that people usually think about when they think about Stripe and crypto, but we're really bringing it to life and the numbers show for themselves. Like we yeah. are seeing a lot of growth and we're seeing like, average order values be three times the average wow. amount um, if they yeah. used a non-stable coin payment method. That's amazing. And I know that you're, you mentioned the stable coin booth here on the floor. Um, I've been able to see it in practice in real life, but can you kind of walk us through the process of how to accept a stable coin pay-in and what that looks like? Yeah, definitely. Um, so it's really easy. Um, it's basically a payment method that you can turn on from the Stripe dashboard. So you basically go into your payment method settings page and you're able to see crypto as one of the options. And once you click that to turn it on, you're able to actually accept stablecoin payments with anything available on our optimized checkout suite as well as the Stripe APIs. So if you're using Stripe Checkout, if you're using a Stripe Payment Element, or just a Payment Intense API, you're able to accept stable coins. And what's funny is that in our stable coin spotlight area, we actually did a little bit of a hack where we use Stripe Terminal to basically um, turn it into a way for our coffee station to accept stable coin payments too. No way. <laughs> All right. So I hear that's nitro cold brew yes, with some half, very half creamer that you can do with maybe some lavender flavoring is yes. that what i've seen and cold foam they cold yeah foam. they got the all whole right. works all right so if you're if you're tuning in and you're here listening live from sessions definitely go check out the stable coin booth though so now that's super excited so um, we just heard again this morning as we mentioned earlier some awesome additional announcements in the stable coin space so is there anything else exciting you'd like to share with us Yes, so we had to keep it under wraps for so long, but um, after we made our bridge acquisition, so we, uh, for those who, of you who don't know, we actually acquired a stablecoin orchestration company. Uh, we announced that last year and the acquisition closed earlier this year um, to basically give a supercharged su uh, power to all of our Stripe crypto products. And what we've been working on is basically leveraging Bridge and the power of stable coins to allow users to have a stable coin financial account. And what that means is that users from 101 countries can actually hold a stable coin balance that they could receive and send funds out to over stable coins, over eight different blockchains, but wow. also through the power of bridge, we're able to actually enable these users to do that and get easy dollar access, but also access to regular fiat financial rails, such as ACH, Wire, and SEPA. So from the stablecoin balance, you're able to do all those types of money movement. And I can actually show you if you oh want. Oh my gosh, yes, we love a live demo. This is so exciting, yeah. <laughs> okay, amazing. So uh, here we have a, 
um, stablecoin financial account. And what's really cool is that the countries where this is accessible today are actually countries where Stripe payments is not accessible. We basically decided to prioritize the countries in which you know easy dollar access is probably really exciting for them. Um, so here I have a stablecoin financial account. And the idea is that I could be a user from any of those 101 countries where it would have been really hard for me to actually open up a US bank account to actually be able to have a lot of these things that startups and SMBs in the US kind of just have on the daily. Um, so what's really cool is that, let's say I'm one of these users, but I'm still a product of the internet. You know, like maybe I got some angel investors to be excited about my business um, over Twitter or something, and I want them to easily be able to send funds to me over rails that they're used to in the US, even though I might be based in Argentina or Zambia or whatever um, countries will I talked about earlier. So as you can see from the stablecoin financial account, we actually are giving folks a US dollar, like routing number, account number, um, euros uh, numbers, basically being able to accept US dollars and euros that will land as stablecoins into this balance. And also, you're able to actually also do a crypto transfer across these eight different blockchains, and you're able to allow users to basically, um, you can share this with people who um, are sending you funds and basically are able um, to provision this for yourself. Cool. Should that's, we that's send certain. someone some money? Yes, please. <laughs> send me awesome. some money. <laughs> so what's really cool is that this use case makes it really easy for me to pay out someone uh, over stable coins or over fiat rails. And uh, I've been having trouble with the Wi-Fi recently, but luckily that worked. But basically the idea is that this user who normally does not have any access to stable coin rails or ACH uh, is able to actually finally hire vendors in the US or pay a contractor in the EU right from their stablecoin financial account. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and send some crypto to Eric for his hard work. He's an engineer on the crypto team and has been doing a All lot right, to kind of get everything set up. If yeah. You're, if you're listening, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it's just as simple as a click of a couple buttons, and I'm able to send Eric USDC. But if I had Eric's US bank account number, I can also send him actual US dollars into his bank account. Or if Eric just so happened to be from France, <laughs> I can also send him euros over Sepa Rails as That's well. That's amazing. Yeah, so you have a lot of optionality when it comes to sending and what type, if it's yes. a stable coin versus just normal fiat. Yeah, I think that's a common misconception because people think that, oh, like you have to be in the crypto and in the stable coin ecosystem to take advantage of the stable coin financial account. But the whole point of this is basically for us to use stable coins as a part of the implementation detail mm -hmm. to help solve a problem, which is easy dollar access, being able yeah. to actually distribute the idea of ACH, but to do so in 101 countries. Yeah, so for those that may maybe doesn't yet have stable coin, we're not that far behind when it comes to being able to use, uh, use this product or actually get into kind of the stable coin um, just economy. Yes. Um, this is so exciting. So like in your, from kind of your experience, have you seen some unexpected industries or businesses that have started to adopt stable coins and pay-ins? Yeah. Um, or even financial accounts? <laughs> yes. I mean, stablecoin financial accounts we just launched, so hopefully we'll see some soon. I think what's really interesting is like the countries that are coming through is mm -hmm. cool. Um, but so I have more details for you probably next time around. But for pay-ins, I think what's been really fun is um, a lot of AI companies. Yes. Yeah. Oh so gosh. we're merging the two themes of sessions Big together. Big topic for <laughs> sure this week. Yes, tell us. And I know that we have a ton of AI startups joining this week at sessions and definitely paving the way. But yeah, what, what are some of the trends that you're seeing when it comes to AI startups and then the adoption of stable coins? Um, it's been our probably biggest growth vector for pay so for stable coin payments. I think the reason is that um, AI is, you know, digital by default, mm -hmm. global by default. So the idea of having a way to pay that also follow along the same lines, I think is very natural. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing significant growth there. And also I think it shows the significant growth of the B2B invoicing volume. So when we announced stablecoin payments, we actually went to one-off payments first, and then we announced and we like shipped invoicing later. But invoicing has really, really grown a lot with the AI companies who are basically selling you know, compute power and basically being able to sell that around the world. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Now I know that we've just launched financial accounts, but can you share kind of what you're thinking is next on the roadmap? 
and kind of where we're thinking about leveraging stablecoins use cases at Stripe. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what's I think the other big announcement was the fact that we're able to, with Bridge, issue cards against the stablecoin balance. And that's something, with that capability in the infrastructure layer from the Bridge point of view, we're able to hopefully in the future bring that to stablecoin financial accounts at Stripe as well. So not only will you be able to like click a few buttons in the dashboard to send some funds around, but you're also able to swipe a card and actually see the balance go down and actually pay someone over a card um, using your stablecoin balance and basically add more rails um, to be available to all these countries that um, might find it more difficult to no, that's exciting. Car. And it sounds like also we're extending this for API um, capabilities as well. So you're able to leverage yes. our APIs to also be able to create these use cases. Yes, this is where like having stablecoin financial accounts for platforms, I feel like would be really exciting. So it's not today available on Connect yet, but I think it'll be really important for it to be available on Connect, especially since we have so many existing platforms that want to be able to grow where their connected accounts are, mm -hmm. to be able to do payouts around the world, and basically to be able to reach more and more startups and businesses and basically enable them to grow with the power of growing via a, pop, a platform uh, method. Yeah. Oh my gosh, no, that's so exciting. I'm excited to, to keep an eye out for the next releases, so yeah. uh, definitely tune in. Um, if you're watching at home. Um, and so for, for those who are just kind of starting off in their crypto journey, me being definitely one of them, what are some of the resources you'd recommend for people to be able to kind of learn more about this space and just more around how to build with stablecoin? Yeah, definitely. So, um, like in true Stripe fashion, um, <laughs> you can definitely check out our docs if you're interested in any of the specific products. Um, what's also really cool is that you can find it in the docs as well, but we actually created a new email address for people to reach out. So it's stablecoins at stripe.com, right. which I feel like is really, like, that's a cool, cool one to get. Um, so, we've been helping folks. Uh, get off the stablecoin financial account waitlist there and basically getting them help turning on um, the stablecoin payments product. So I think definitely check those out, check those resources out. Um, but in general, I feel like the space is still new. So it's, you're not too late. I think that's like a lot of mis like a lot of people's worry about getting into stablecoins or even getting into AI is that it's been around for a while, but the use cases are really starting to emerge and there's like so many things that change all the time. So yeah, yeah I feel like just trying things out and playing around with it and checking out how this will actually solve a money movement problem that you might have in your business and thinking about it from that lens as like a solution to a problem is like the most important thing. Yeah, no, I'm super excited about this space and to see what's happening. So last question for you, um, what are you most excited about in this space? And if you could like wave a magic wand of like a really cool feature or use case, what would that be? Oh, uh, that's so hard. You asked me a month ago, it would be like to finish shipping everything for stablecoin yeah. financial accounts, because that definitely came in hot under the wire. Um, I think something that we haven't talked about, but I think a lot of developers always talk about, is that stablecoins are also programmable by default. Like that's the whole like benefit of the blockchain and kind of all the different pieces. Yeah. So I think what's really cool is that you're able to basically move money with like different calls to the blockchain. And you're able to do that on session and off session. So I think we're doing something really interesting with like smart contracts and the kind of we're doing something interesting in the subscription space that will also probably tie into how we grow stablecoin financial accounts. So I think that being able to leverage the infrastructure available to us by using blockchain, such as smart contracts that can kind of do yeah. off-session payments um, to actually solve real problems, such as making subscriptions really seamless, um, is going to be something that we're going to be thinking a lot about. Yeah, no, that's such a great point. And like the Stripe ethos of making programmable money movement, right? And so stablecoins is a really exciting exciting kind of first step in just enabling this at scale globally where we haven't been able to um, in the past. So. Exactly. But no, but thank you so much, Jen, for joining us. Um, very excited about this space. Thank you so much for tuning in and um, hope to see you next time.